everything caused by violence. How somebody can cope with trauma. People are working hard, even though they don't have any means, any way, but they are resilient. They are strong. They are making day and after day. Okay, our second part of the question would be, uh, what can we expect to find in how it has affected some people? How can we expect to find in how it has affected some people? You know, these people are coming, they are affected. How do we really expect to find that in them? Let me start. These people are really, really affected. Why? They are away from their families. Some of the family members have died, have passed away. These people are wounded. They are very, very affected. But there is no choice, but they have to be there. OK, can someone, uh, do you want to alert, or do you want to see something there? You don't need to if you are not ready for that. Okay. Because they have not, they have no, um, it's, it's not part of the culture, so they might not be easily to seek that help. So I think that would be something that um, really would be needed with the trauma that they have faced. And also for the community, um, it is always easy when you find something familiar and the person who has been here and, and, and directing you to say it's okay, you can do this. And, and I think that's where the community will be needed in terms of encouraging them to, to seek counsel for psychological health and also for the integration. Um, you want to add <laughs> yeah, and also for the integration, you just need that familiar face to say, go here, go here, and it's okay, and then hold their hands towards. Okay, and you would like one minute, just uh, And so the, the, the conflict and the, 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 these people suffer, it, we will say it is more people who have been suffered than the Second World War. It's a lot of them. And, and it's been a big conflict. The truth is, um, this, it wasn't more of a war that is bombing, boom, 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 whatever. Most of the trauma that those people went through is about and also physically, um, especially like you just mentioned about rape. And you can imagine when you are seeing this lie that they are sexually abusing your father, your mother, or you abusing your children right in front of you. And then of course they turning, uh, especially the young uh, soldiers. Uh, you know they raping women live like in the daytime. You know, so you can imagine how much of those things is affecting these people right in their own home, in their own home. And Congo also is before the war, it was a peaceful country. We never experienced a lot of war. Um, that's why you see Congolese people are not violent people like many other African people. We, they, we, we have no idea of how you do and killing another person. We have adopted this from neighboring countries of being violent to each other. Congolese don't kill each other. It's not right. part of our culture. Okay, okay. So what we have just had in the panelists was the current situation in Congo. Now I think the service providers wanted to know more about the culture and tradition. And this is always what we in the field really want to know. Okay? And again, any of you can answer. Uh, please, can you tell us, or tell the service providers, a little bit about what life was like before the conflict? Well, the culture in Congo is the foundation of who we are. We teach our children to obey each other. We teach our children to obey the adult. We teach our children to be our neighbor. We know each other. Uh, it's a wonderful culture. I mean, we are really deep down in our own culture. Um, and we're very proud of it. We've talked about different languages. But we are bound to about four national languages that at least most of us speak. And that's how we are able to communicate. Of course, Congo was colonized by the Belgium, so French is the primary language that we all speak as well. But culturally, we are uh, people who are, have, we are proud of our culture. So before any conflict or any issue happened in Congo, people celebrated 
their life daily through uh, their food, through the display of their clothing. So in the back there, we put some of our drum. You will see a little one just to see that we are proud people. We are people who actually, uh, in Africa, if there is culture being reigned in Africa, mostly culture, especially music, come from Congo. Okay, Lee, thank you so much. Uh, maybe, Pape, if you want to put something in there. Again, we want to know what was life like before the conflict? Uh, life was so well. I didn't expect that I would come to America to stay and to become an American citizen. I thought I would come to school, get my degree, and go work for the churches in uh, Congo. But since I've been here 25 years ago, I never went back. Being afraid, when you call people, just send us money. Don't, don't waste your ticket to come here. There's so many trouble around. Life was very, very good before all these trials and tribulations. Thank you. So, of course, life was always normal and people are happy. All right. The next part is, of course, in Congo, uh, people speak like 700 different languages. And we were just wondering, the service providers wanted to know if some of you are able to speak some of the languages. These people coming from the East do speak. They speak beautifully with that. So. With regard to language, <laughs> this is not something new to us. I'm an example here. My father is married to my, my, uh, my mother. My father's father is Mubala. My mother's father is Musongo. On the other side, some other people speak Kihungani. Around our table, when we share the meal, my father will say, Mpe Manza. Give me water. My grandma will say, Mpebua. Pesamunu luku. Pesam. So around the table, there is five or different dialects being spoken in one family. So this problem of language is not really an issue to us. When we go to school and recess time, we're playing soccer. One of our friends said, Betawa, Betawa. I mean, give me, pass to me. Another who, who, who shout in another language. Pesamuno, pe. So we can speak those languages together. And we live together just like that. Right. Languages <laughs> will not be a problem unto us. Whether those people come from the East, like uh, other people here say, 7,000 dollars. That's us. That's our culture. That's who we are. That's what makes us Congolese. We speak. There's a diversity in us, in our life. And we accept it and we receive it. Thank you, Papi. I know the question was, just tell us what some of the languages, some of you speak. Okay. Specifically just speak. Uh, the language that I speak, uh, Kimbala, I speak Lingala, I speak uh, French, uh, I speak Kikongo, Kihungani, uh, just to name the few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I'm Kimbala, I'm from Kikongo, and I speak some people who speak uh, some language we don't speak mostly in West because uh, as the map is, um, in most of the region that the West speaks uh, uh, Lingala, Kikongo, Lingala in the North, Kikongo, Lingala in South West, and uh, the East speaks Swahili. So the, East, the North speaks Swahili and the South speaks Swahili. But the refugees are coming, like we have uh, Chinuba in the center. So 
lack of 37 percent spirits in our land. They live in. So most of them are refugees in the country, or in my country, or in the Congo. So we decide to contact some people who speak uh, in Rwanda because it's going to be much better for them. You know, people, African people are more confident when they meet people, they share the same thing. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, uh, okay. What we just trying to say is we're developing a roster of translators um, so that uh, I mean, we have a community number. It's very easy to remember if you can think of 501c3. We're not yet, but perhaps at some point. It's 501-3060. So June 30th, 1960 is actually the Independence Day of Congo. Um, so 501-3060, you can contact the, the uh, um, Congolese Union in Pittsburgh, and we're developing a roster of translators so that providers who are required by law to provide uh, translators can be connected to someone in the community um, who has that expertise and would be willing to be on call. So the roster that we're developing now can be a resource to you. Um, and we can talk more about that later if you want. Thank you. Uh,